Hi, this is Anthony Taggart from theswingengineer.com. In this video, I'll be discussing Bryson DeChambeau's swing, and in particular, his swing radius. So what do I mean by swing radius? Well, in this context, I mean the distance between the club head and the left shoulder. This is determined by a couple of things. Firstly, the length of the left arm and of the club you're holding. So if you have long arms and you're holding a driver, you're going to have a larger swing radius than someone with shorter arms holding a wedge, for example. The second factor that determines the swing radius is the angle between the left arm and the club. This can be altered by how you hold the club and also by cocking and uncocking the left wrist. So with this in mind, let's look at Bryson's swing. One of Bryson's distinctive features is that he swings on one plane. This means whatever plane angle his club is at address, it stays on the incline throughout the stroke. To help achieve this, Bryson sets up with a relatively steep plane angle at address. And to do this, he stands quite upright and maximizes the angle between the arms and the club. This means Bryson's swing radius is at its maximum. It's almost the whole length of the club shaft plus the length of his left arm. It couldn't be any longer. And this is one of the reasons Bryson hits the ball as far as he does. I'll explain why. Imagine two wheels, one with a radius of 30 centimeters and another with a radius of 40. Let's say both wheels are rotating at the same speed. It takes 10 seconds to make a complete rotation. So they're both moving at 6 RPM, that's 6 revolutions per minute. So which size wheels, if attached to a car and rotating at 6 RPM, would move the car faster? It would be the larger wheels. Although both wheels are rotating at the same speed, the larger wheel has a greater circumference. This means in one rotation, the larger wheel has covered a greater distance compared to the smaller wheel. And because speed is distance divided by time, it results in the car with larger wheels moving faster. The same concept applies in golf. If you take two golfers pivoting their bodies with the same rotational speed, but have different size swing radiuses, the one with the larger radius will swing the club head faster. And this of course results in hitting the ball further. So does this mean if you maximize your swing radius like Bryson, you'll hit the ball further? Probably not. Going back to our wheel analogy, if you want to build a really fast car, it would make sense to use huge wheels. The bigger, the better. However, in reality, that's not the case. Take Formula One cars, for example. They're built to be as fast as possible and can travel over 200 miles per hour but their wheel diameters aren't much different from regular cars. This is because a large wheel requires more force to rotate at the same RPM as a smaller wheel. So with the input force being equal, you can spin a smaller wheel quicker than you can a larger one. So there comes a point of diminishing returns for wheel size, where a larger wheel actually slows you down. And again, the same applies to golf. The larger your swing radius, the more effort it takes to swing the club head at speed. The shorter the swing radius, the easier it is to swing, and so the quicker you can move the club head. So how does Bryson get away with it? By hitting the gym. You have to be incredibly strong to move a large swing radius quickly. For most golfers, the trade-off just isn't worth it. Using trial and error, play with your own swing radius at the range. See what effect it has on your distances. You may be able to add a few yards by either increasing or decreasing your own swing radius. If you'd like to learn more about the physics of golf and how it can help lower your scores, try my book, The Golf Enchiridion. Visit theswingengineer.com for more info.